Hello. In this video, we're going to code a solution to this in Python. We're, first, we're going to actually code an inefficient solution, actually, in this video. And then in the subsequent video, we're going to code a more efficient solution in Python. Um, again, this is why I love teaching computer science, because this was the first solution that popped into my mind. And it didn't take long for a student to say, you know what, I have a little bit of better approach, which is always great to hear. So what we're going to do, and at this point, you should have read and understand the problem. So if you haven't, you can go back to the previous video and kind of take a look at what the, how the problem breaks down is. We're going to take first the first substring, a substring of one from the front, and then we're going to compare it against the rest. Then we're going to take the two, compare it against the rest, and we're going to take three, compare it against the rest. So I've actually written the code already, but I've only written part of the code. I've written the part of the code. I'm just going to pull out the components of those, the, the, the checks that I'm going to check to see if it's a root. And that's this first loop right here. So if I pass ABC, ABC into my function, you'll notice that what it does, the check is A the first time the loop runs, then it's AB, then it's ABC. I don't actually have to go larger than ABC because there's no chance that ABC A will be the root because it's over half the length of the string. So the idea is that if I get to half the length of the string and don't find a, a root, I know that the root of the string is the entire string itself. So the internal loop in our approach is what actually then goes and checks that that substring we've pulled out, the possible root, against everything else. And the thing about this is that we're approaching this such that if we happen to, because we're starting with the smallest root possible, if we prove that that smallest root is the solution, we don't have to go on and check subsequent cases. So to do this, let me take out that check there. We have a Boolean variable called true. And what this does is this assumes that check is the root. And then this loop is going to loop through the remaining string and check that the check variable. So you'll notice in terms of the loop setup, the tricky thing here is figuring out what are the count, check, and change of the loop. So again, if we come back into here, let's look at this example, we can see that if we put the indexes on this, I'm just going to pause the video and add indexes here. So I've added here the indexes for the string. And so in this first case here, um, possible root is going to be A. Good old Microsoft auto-corrected that. So that means j has to start at 1. So for the counter j, count equals 1. Check equals the same, which is basically that j is less than the length of our word. And our change is equal to 1. And then for our second case, where the root is a, b, j, the count is going to start at 2 in this case, because notice 0, 1, 2, so it's going to start the C. The check is going to equal J is less than the length of the word again, and the change this time is 2, because notice I'm going to check is that AB, and then I'm going to jump all the way to this one and check that. And finally, for the third case, the possible root is ABC. I apologize for the capitalization, small case inconsistencies. That's autocorrect here. The count is going to equal 3, because that's where I start to check. The check in the loop is j is less than the length of word, and the change in this case is 3. And what you'll notice when you look at this from a pattern perspective is that the count and change always equal i. So if we come back into our code here, and we're setting up our count, check, and change, we're going to set j to start at i, we're going to set the check is that i is currently less than the length of the word. And we're going to check that. We're going to check that i is incremented, that, that our change is by i. And then all we do is we pull out the substring. And if it's not equal to i, so we check substring. 
if it's not equal to if it's not equal to our check, then what we do is we set good to false, and then we break. And this exits the loop. So what this is going to do is it's going to exit our loop and come down to here. Because good is set to false, it skips that and comes back up and then starts again. So if I come down here and I run this now, there's my substring check. If we put in the case, B, 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 bunch of B's, there's my root. And if we put in a case, for example, A, T, T, A, A, T, T, A, A, T, T, A, there's my root. And I put in some random string with no pattern. There's my root. So in the next video, we're going to talk about a solution that was proposed by a student, which is far more efficient and actually uses a really great technique that I'm hoping everyone will become comfortable with. I hope this video helped.